Hello, my name is James Bounden and I'm from the RNIB. And in this session, we'll look at creating electronic braille files. We'll look at creating electronic braille books. Now for many years, the RNIB has had a postal braille lending library and books arrive through the post in large canvas bags. They get read and then sent back to us. But over recent years, and especially recent months, we're now receiving more requests to receive electronic files, perhaps the popular BRF format. It's obviously lower cost for us to produce. We don't have to pr produce main, we don't have to produce lots of bulky paper. And it's also quicker because you don't have to wait for the amazing British Postal Service. But the question is, what should these electronic braille files look like? The simplest solution would just be to send out the several files which make up the original volumes. But this has several difficulties. First of all, there are several files, which some users may find difficult. And if you have a, a large books, you may well have well over a dozen of them. Another problem is that you get interrupted by the first line of the original Braille page, which is the page information line or header line. There's an example of this in sample one of the paper, which I'll read. Part of it says, it's a new patient. He, print page 192, the engineer's thumb, Braille page 57, whispered full stop. I thought I'd bring him, and so on. Clearly, this is not ideal at all. Um, and the next problem is because it's formatted for embossing, there may well be lots of blank spaces, blank lines, for example, at the end of a page where you wanted to take a new page. And perhaps specifically at the very top of the file, when you first open it, rather than reading the title of the book, because it's normally displayed on line three, you might end up just seeing the number one, which is the first page number, or if you're unlucky with a short braille display, you'll just get blank. Definitely not ideal. So there are some obvious first steps. Combine all the volumes together, remove the blank lines, and remove the page information lines on line one. That's quite easy to automate and one can write a program and I might d demonstrate that later if there's time. But in doing so, we introduce some interesting other problems in that, for example, each volume has a title page and we don't really want to be interrupted with the title of the book halfway through. Each volume may have a contents page which refers to braille page numbers which no longer exist and so on and so on. So we need to remove the title pages of all volumes two, three, four, five, six, etc. We need to remove the end of volume one, two, three, four, five, etc. except for the last one. Remove the contents page for everything except the first volume. And if the first volume only contains a braille contents page, well, braille page numbers don't exist. So that goes as well. Print page numbers do still exist because they are indicated with what's called a print page indicator. And in the UK, it's dot five, dot two five, and then the page number. In the US, it's a line of dots three six, followed by the page number. And then there are things like footnotes, which need to be collected from the end of each braille volume and put at the end of the book, etc., etc. And developing a program to automate this becomes more and more interesting, but we want to automate as much as possible. Oh yes, and just to make things more interesting still, some of our books are in contracted braille or grade two, and some are in uncontracted braille or grade one. Some books are in unified English braille, but our older books are in standard English braille. And don't forget, some books are double line spaced. Now, if you try to read a book which is double line spaced on a single line braille display, it really does quickly become very frustrating. 
you have a line of text and then a blank, another line of text and then another blank, and so on and so forth. Now, things began to accelerate because of, I'm sorry guys, the lockdown um, with the infamous virus. So our postal braille library was actually closed because we couldn't get into the building. So instead, we had this idea of putting a lot of books onto uh, an SD card and sending it out to our readers together with Orbit Reader braille displays. We put 700 cards, 700 books rather, onto the card, and this was very popular. The books not only included general fiction novels, but there were a couple of recipe books, uh, there's even a dictionary and a couple of Bibles. I want to talk briefly about the dictionaries and the Bibles, these reference works, if you like. They, just, they deserve a little bit of special mention because the real thing about a reference book is you want to be able to find things and find them unambiguously and quickly. Just take an example, you want to know the definition of the word feast. Now, if you just type feast into the find box, you're very likely to find the definition of banquet instead, because the word feast may occur within the definition of banquet, and you haven't actually found the word you're looking for in the dictionary. So what did we do? The interesting thing about the dictionary was all the root words, if you like, were written in uncontracted braille, and they started at the margin. So it was fairly easy to prefix all of those with a double dot five six, or if you like, a grade one word indicator. So now all I have to do to find the word feast is type in dot five six dot five six F E A S T, and the braille display will go straight to the right place unambiguously. What about the Bible? The Bible consists of 66 books. Now we could have split it all up into 66 files, but then we're right back into that realm of so many files you don't know quite what to do with. So instead, it's one big file like the original print book. And instead of writing Genesis and then chapter one and then chapter two, we wrote Genesis one, Genesis two and so on. And so you can uniquely find any chapter simply by typing in the book name followed by the chapter number. If you needed to go down to a verse, you simply type in the verse number as a second search. So this really brings us on to the whole topic of how do we navigate these braille files on a braille display. They no longer contain header lines, they no longer contain content sometimes, and they certainly don't contain volumes. The best way we found is to use a find command, just like a find command in a word processor. It's great for finding specific text, but you can also use it for print page numbers. I originally, I mentioned the .5, .25 sign earlier, immediately followed by the page number. You can look for a table of contents, if one exists, by searching for the word contents. Remember to write it in the correct grade of Braille and include a capital sign if there is one in the grade. And to make sure that you find contents as a heading rather than just a random word that might appear in the blurb at the beginning of the book, Put some spaces at the beginning. So space, 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 dot six, lower middle C, T, lower E, T, etc. You're almost guaranteed to find it if it's there. So that's easy for page numbers and contents. What about chapters? Chapters can be shown in a variety of ways, either with or without the word chapter or Arabic numbers, Roman numbers as words, O-N-E, T-W-O, etc., And you only find that out when you find where's chapter one. We can find chapter one fairly easily in our books because we repeat the title of the text at the top of the text, at the top of the main text. So 
just search for the title of the book, move forward, and you will find the first chapter. But of course, doing so, you may well have missed the introduction if there was one or any acknowledgements, preface, etc., etc. Of course, you may not want to read them anyway. I should also mention in our Braille books in the UK layout, we have these things called end markers and they occur at the end of each chapter. So it's quite easy to search for a line of dots to five or maybe a line of dot twos if it's a sub section and you can move forward and find the next major heading. I could talk about footnotes and indexes and other more complicated things, but really the procedure ends up almost exactly the same as what a sighted person actually does to use an index. First of all, you, you search for the index, then you search for the letter in the index, then you search for the word in the index by just browsing down. You find the page number and then just jump back to that page number. Almost exactly the same for footnotes. Of course, if you have a, book, a bookmark facility, great to maintain your place when you go back. It was suggested that perhaps a new file format might be needed, which would make it much easier to jump to, say, the next heading or the next paragraph or the next table, etc. You know, like we're used to having these sort of quick navigation keys in screen readers for things like PDF documents and Word documents. Although approaches have been made so far, there have been no takers. So finally, I'd like to try and, as we say, devolumize a simple book. It was suggested I try an Enid Blyton title, like five go to an international braille conference, but I couldn't find that one in the library. So instead, I've got a Ruth Rendell book. Um, I think it's called No More Dying Then. I haven't read it, so I cannot vouch for it. I'm going to share my screen and I'm going to go through the semi-manual process just using the simple programs, removing the page headers and blank lines and so on, and then stitching it all together. Let's hope this works. So I'm going first of all to the command prompt where I'm typing all these commands in manually and I'll try and describe what I'm doing for those who are not able to see the screen. I'm typing a program called BookProc, which is something I wrote. It's basically a simple batch file and the archive number of the Braille book, which is 26560402. Notepad comes up and it should be, Braille, it should be showing in Braille on the screen because I set the font. I'm also using a Braille display here. Great way to work on Braille files. The first line is currently blank so I'm going to delete that and now I see the title I'm moving down and there's a double blank line after the author's name before a, a marker and it says in four volumes I'm going to change in four volumes to ebraille edition and removing the words volume one because that's no longer necessary there's another blank line and then the rest of the title page. Another blank line there, so I get rid of that. Now I'm whizzing past most of the blurb. I don't need to know it. I'm going to search for the word content, which in Braille code is 3T5T. And it's found a thing called a general content. So let's look what we've got in here. It just says the Braille edition is divided as follows. Volume one contains print pages one to 73, etc. And then it's just got an end marker at the end. Now there's no useful information in that anymore because we don't have braille pages or braille volumes. So very straightforward. I'm going to delete it. Then there's a dedication and a blank line again. Get rid of the two blank lines, make it just a one. And we have the main title, print page one, chapter one. And there we go. That is effectively the start of the main text. I don't need to do anything else except skip to the end of the volume where I have the words end of V1. Again, delete, save, close. Volume two comes up. 
Again, we have a title page. I just skip straight past it and find the beginning of the text, delete everything from the beginning to the start of the text, go to the end of the volume and delete end of volume two. Save, close, volume three comes up. Exactly the same procedure. I'm deleting from the beginning of the text up to the first of the main text, go to the end, remove, end of vol three, save, close, and the final volume's coming up. Exactly the same procedure. Find the start of the text, delete up to there, go to the end, and this time we don't see end of vol four, we see the words the end, save, close. I'm back to the command prompt, book join, 26560402. There it is on the screen, ready to rock. There's much more in the paper. There's much more in the paper. I hope you enjoy reading it and happy reading. Thank you.